Hey, good morning, everybody. This is First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich. This is an update on the severe weather threat that's going to be arriving in the Carolinas this evening and overnight tonight. What you're looking at right now is a current satellite and radar loop across the region. You can see we've got big time storms over the Mississippi River Valley. Uh, over us, we've got quite a few clouds over the region right now, which is actually helping keep things a little bit cool. I'm going to actually stop this and going a little bit closer. And you can see over the Carolinas right now, I'm going to pop some temperatures up here. We've got these uh, low-level clouds. They're kind of stratus, foggy-looking clouds. Uh, really not a big deal. These are probably going to burn off here shortly, unfortunately. I wish they'd hold on, but these are the type of clouds that tend to mix out as the day goes on. If you look out in eastern North Carolina and the low country, South Carolina, these are more instability clouds. This is more of a sign of, of some of the humidity which is surging to the north. And really, those are the two things I'm watching. The amount of sunshine and the amount of moisture we get in the atmosphere. So we'll flip over to the dew point temperatures and we'll actually throw some dew point temperatures on here as well. That'll give you a good indication of where the deeper moisture is. Um, you can see the 60 degree dew points are surging in here. And this is what I was fearing yesterday, um, getting these 60 degree dew points surging in from the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic. Look at the widespread area of 60 to near 70 degree dew points. That's very rich air moving into the region. Much different than yesterday. Even though it was warm yesterday, dew points were generally in the mid 50s. Um, right now, those dew points have shot up for the most part into the uh, lower and middle 60s. Now, where we're having some issues this afternoon is going to be this little area down here near Louisiana and eastern Texas. And if you look real closely there, I'll take off uh, some of the other parameters. Right here where we have a currently have a tornado watch till 3 o'clock central time, I'm going to throw some other parameters on here. Those are the dew points. I'm going to throw on the 500 millibar. Um, vorticity. And you can see we've got a little short wave coming out of Texas, which is going to help enhance the severe weather threat down here over Louisiana. For that reason, that's why you have the severe weather risk. Well, this is likely going to pivot or rotate up like this as we go into the afternoon. And this little vorticity may actually help induce what we call a mesolo, which is just a weak area of low pressure uh, that forms um, along this line. We could see a mesolo form right in here somewhere and move up here as well. That would help increase the wind shear this afternoon. So right now you look at the STP, we call this the significant tornado parameter, pretty strong ahead of the main line. I would expect areas over Georgia, Alabama, and the upstate of South Carolina to see these levels increase this afternoon. We look at the uh, low level winds. Um, when you start looking at um, the 500 or 850 millibar uh, winds. I'm going to show you that real quickly. Let me flip over to that. We'll turn off the STP. This is something we refer to a lot as a low-level jet. You can see pretty strong low-level jet cranking up. So that's helping and aiding these thunderstorms develop this afternoon. Um, the clouds right now are actually our friend, but as we go into the afternoon, I expect the clouds to thin, as you see, over parts of upstate of South Carolina and northern Georgia. So instability will probably soar. So what's it going to look like by this afternoon? Well, let's turn off all our current stuff. And let's go into some model data. We showed you the 850 millibar winds. Uh, let me show you reflectivity or future radar. This is from the high resolution uh, HRR model, which goes out 12 hours. We'll go out uh, to about 2 o'clock this afternoon. You can see already some storms trying to form ahead of the main line. These are likely just instability little showers. But this is what we'll have to watch going into the afternoon hours. You see this little area of thunderstorms that are out way ahead of the main line. And this is really the biggest concern. If we're going to see a tornado threat, it's going to be because some of these cells rotate. And then within the main line, we may see some little Boeing segments that might have what we call uh, bookend vortices or line echo wave pattern type of uh, rotation within the line. And as we go into the evening hours, we'll go out to about 7 o'clock. You can see 7 o'clock looks to be the time frame that we start to see storms develop. So let's go out even further. Uh, we'll go out to 8 o'clock, and this is from the NAM 4 model, which is another short-range, high-resolution model. This is 8 o'clock this evening. You see this line that develops out ahead of the main line. That's the one that we'll have to watch, and we'll likely see two waves of severe weather, likely that first round um, around 8 or 9 o'clock, and then into the overnight hours, the main front comes through, which looks like it should arrive around 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, this would be the front arriving at 2 o'clock in the morning with a line of severe storms. And then we go into tomorrow morning, and by the time you wake up, this is about 8 a.m., uh, the rain could be lingering, but the, most of it should be gone. And I think by 9, 10, 11 o'clock a.m., all the rain is gone. And so by you know noontime tomorrow, 
most of the rain is out of here. So that's the main threat. Two waves uh, moving in this evening. I'm going to turn everything back on here. We'll turn back to temperatures um, that I'm worried about. It's really going to be whatever happens down here. So this is what I'm watching right now. I'm watching for the sun to come out here. I'm watching for how high the dew points get, and then I'm waiting to see what happens down in here with these cells as they move up into this, what is going to be an increasingly unstable air mass. Now, just because we get past sunset, remember, sun doesn't set till about 8 o'clock, so we got max heating now later in the evening. So 7, 8 o'clock is pretty warm time, and even an hour or two after sunset, it could be warm enough to sustain these storms. So don't let your guard down. If you get a chance today, charge up your phone all the way. Uh, go to WCNC.com, download the Charlotte Weather app to get live radar and alerts, but also download the uh, NBC Charlotte News app because we stream our newscast live there. And if we should break in, we'll stream as well. And, of course, always follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Those are all backup plans to get you information. Hope you have a great day. I'll stay on top of this and give you updates as things progress. But this is our first bout of severe weather here in the spring season. So it's time to prepare. And even, even if we miss out on the most of the severe weather, the good news is well, this is a good trial run to get us ready for what will likely be an active next couple of months here as we go into early summer. Of course, I'll be on the air starting at 4, 5, and 6. But you can always find me online 24 hours a day. Until then, have a great day, and I'll see you starting at 4.